So in front of me we have the Bigot M10 IV. I received this reel around two weeks ago and I filmed an unboxing. Luckily I failed filming the unboxing with the sound and the light. So here's the short version of unboxing the Bigot M10 IV. And because watching somebody opening up a box is probably boring anyway, I will just hurry up. In the box I found five different things which was the Bigot M10 IV, including these side pads without the power pads. These side pads, cushions, however you want to call them, are not pre-installed, which is kind of silly, I would say, because when you buy something, you expect it to be assembled. Anyways, it comes with this double-sided sticky tape, which I do recommend you to just throw it out straight away. Just rip it off and take Velcro because this double-sided tape just sticks once and then you go out for a little ride, you go through the dirt, the dirt flips in between the sticky tape and then you have pretty fast non-sticky tape and not sticky tape anymore. I installed the torque pads, how you can see they were on my RS before but I am kind of in a real changing situation. I will sell my RS. I ordered the Bigot T4. I already received my new Bigot T4 Lite, which also fits for the master. My friend put it on the master. He said it's great. So if you want to see how to install a third party light on the master or T4, there will be an upcoming video. Anyways, back to this one. The second thing you will find in the box is this small charger. I think it's a nice charger. I like the charger. It doesn't make any noise. And I think that's the best thing about it because the RS charger is quite loud, quite noisy. Like the RS itself with the fan, I needed to replace it. And because I'm in the library right now quite often because I need to study until mid of February, um, I like to charge my reel and just save the energy costs and uh, yeah, if you have a charger that doesn't make any noise, it's obviously really nice. The third thing in the box is the certificate of compliance. I don't think it's really interesting, so I will skip this part. The fourth thing in the box is the Bigot user manual. I also think it's not really interesting, except they replaced the Bigot M10 III with the Bigot M10 IV, but they still carry on the Bigot EX20S in here, which is kind of interesting because they don't produce this one anymore. You can see the Master, the T4, not the Master Pro, but it's a user manual, so nothing spectacular. The last thing I found in the box were these two My E-Reels sticker. Thank you for that, My E-Reels. I bought it from my e-reels obviously and that's kind of with the unboxing already but in this video I also want to tell you about my first 30 kilometers of riding. I want to tell you some pros, some cons and because I have my last exams until mid of February I will probably not put too much effort and time into videos right now but after that I want to do a full-on review on the Big Old T4. This is more like a first impressions, um, first pros and cons, what I like and don't like about this reel. Like I said, I don't like this sticky tape situation. Um, yeah, this is the Velcro. I don't feel comfortable taking off my talk pads off right now because I feel like I found the perfect position for it. Um, another small thing I did is the handle. It is super noisy while riding and it kind of makes the sound experience while riding the wheel quite cheap because you can hear this while riding the whole time. The only difference is that I taped the metal here so the sound is quite dampened by now which just makes less noise and sounds less cheap or something. Two more things before going outside and showing you how the wheel looks while riding, how it feels and everything is the kickstand. I think this kickstand is great. I love it. It really like it is 
that's that's like a solid kickstand like i don't know what else you want to have this is this is great and the last thing which is not great and i really don't know which small chinese asian fingers went into this little hole and the last thing is this tiny hole like i really don't know with whose little fingers you are supposed to go into this little hole um opening up the charge port it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous like why would you design something like that i really want to do a 3d print in the future because you can't open up the charge port without a tool like you need a tool you need a kit like a small kit with small fingers or you come from the other hole and you kind of work your ray around it while mostly turning on the wheel with your finger then you kind of sometimes turn it off again it's just i don't know what they thought like why there's not something to pull on it's stupid but in the end you are able to charge the wheel no big deal the light always turns off which is kind of stupid or interesting i don't know so i turn on the wheel i turn on the light i have it here i turn the wheel off half an hour later i want to go again or 10 seconds later i turn on the wheel again the light is off again it doesn't save your light settings is it a big deal probably not you have this light setting you have this light setting and you have this light setting this beeping sound of turning the wheel on and off is quite nice because it's not too loud when you go and ride the wheel and you are at 32 35 kilometers whatever 40 kilometers an hour and the wheel starts beeping and you have a little bit of wind noise you have like cars around you like some traffic noise you won't be able to hear the sound of this beeper which is kind of stupid i think there should be volume settings for turning it off and on it doesn't need to be that loud than the rs because the rs is just way too loud like everybody in the room at the gym just looks at you when you turn on the wheel like it's so loud this one is not but the beeper is not loud enough and that's something i figured out after the first kilometers and everything else i will show you outside so just going downstairs is quite nice already so welcome outside this is me riding obviously the m10 fog and one or two more specs so interesting facts about this wheel i received this wheel with 82.2 volts out of 84 out of 84 point something which means it had over 90 percent charge which i think is a little too much for a wheel to ship from china to bulgaria to germany i expected them to have the wheel charged between 40 and 60 percent just to prevent any battery damage anyways it also didn't have any kilometers on it i expected to have the wheel a few meters on it it i don't know if it had 50 meters on it or something but it like i did a free spin test and after it it had 150 meters on it um so it kind of had no no kilometers on it which means it is brand new yes but I expected the factory to test it or my e-wheels or something. I mean, if my e-wheels needs to test any wheel and unbox it and everything, that also costs a lot of money. No way. That's crazy. Haven't seen that in a while. Wondering what they will use that for. Maybe it's, it's their new toilet. Who knows? Anyways, that brings me to the next topic that they didn't test it because my dad ordered the wheel as well. So we received two wheels. Mine was absolutely fine. 
his wheel had display problems. It kind of didn't work the display, sometimes it did. We stored them in the same room, so it wasn't a temperature problem or something. So what I ended up doing is I contacted my e-wheels and I told them about the display issue. And I also told them I can open the wheel, but before I want their permission, because I don't want to lose warranty by opening up the wheel or something. Anyways, they told me I can do it. And um, there's this one fix, you can bend the pins a little bit. It kind of worked in the beginning, but then the display stopped working again. So in the end, I swapped out the two different displays I had because we had two wheels. And now my display is working absolutely fine with my dad's broken display. And my dad's display works as well. So in the end, this fix worked for us, at least for now. Let's see for how long. And now you probably are wondering, how does this tiny thing feel between my legs? And uh, how you can see, I'm going up hill right now. This is kind of a steep mountain. Like if you have a bicycle, you would probably push up your bicycle if it's not electric. I don't know how many degrees this mountain has, but I am going up 20 without any problem. Uh, with a full charge, by the way. Hello. And yeah, just going down and floating down the road is no problem at all. After a while you figure out how to carve and then the wheel starts making a lot of fun. And another thing I wanted to talk about was Electric Dreams video I saw and he kind of hated on this wheel. He didn't like it. He said get the M103 instead of the M104 if you can. And he had his own reasons for it. I absolutely respect that. And I think that's cool that different people have different opinions. Anyways, I think this wheel is super fun. I haven't had the M103 though. Um, but just uh, the way it looks, the way it rides, how it feels that you can go up to 40. That means you can cruise around 30 without a problem. Some people look at you like you would be an alien or something, especially in a country like Germany where nobody's riding electric unicycles because it's not allowed. This wheel is super zippy, at least in the beginning. It kind of um, it kind of dips down a little, if you can see that, while accelerating. But it's uh, the medium mode, it's not the soft or the hard mode. A lot of people say the soft mode would be the best one. I feel comfortable riding at a medium. But I'm a medium guy, I also ride my RS in medium mode. The turning angle is kind of zero, how you can see. And riding backwards is super easy. I can kind of ride backwards with the RS, but uh, learning it on a small wheel is definitely fun. And this is this is just this is just a fun wheel to just wah, play around. Um, and yeah, just experience the world with a different wheel. So a few more things. My cruising speed is around 25 up to 30 kilometers an hour. Um, like right now I'm going 28, 27. That's kind of the speed where you can carve, where you have fun. The wheel is fully under control. Um, I talked to Vern Ray or he replied to my question how he got, he, how he got this wheel on 40 kilometers an hour. And uh, he said I probably had uh, wrong settings with the beeps in the app. That's probably possible because mine starts beeping at 32 kilometers an hour. And I saw it in his video, his started at 40. But he also told me like, don't go 40 on it. It's uh, kind of dangerous. And I agree. Um, he said even going 30, probably 
not the safest. But I think 30 is going, like 30 is fine. Everything beyond 30 is probably a little dangerous, but but it's fun. <laughs> I don't know, it's super fun. Tire and pedals, I cannot tell you too much about that right now. I feel like I need to test ride it more and just, yeah, get, get a couple of kilometers on this wheel before being able to tell you anything about the tire and the pedals. But for now, like, I'm fine with the pedals. I don't know, a lot of people are hating on them. I saw a really nice mod from um, Electric Roller. He did his own spiked pedals with the T4 pedals, which are these pedals. If you didn't know how the pedals look like, this is how the pedals look like. And the tire, one guy was saying, it feels like a foot massage. And why would they put a knobby tire on it? Yes, it probably wasn't the best choice for a tiny wheel like that. But I, I ride a lot in like the dirt, probably not with this wheel. But uh, for now, I'm fine with the tire, I'm fine with the pedals. I will compare the pedals with the nylon novice I have. I will just put the nylon novice on this one and see how that feels and um, yeah if you have any questions for the big review or however you want to call it for the bigger test let me know this will be somewhere in february i would say i know somewhere is not a word but i like that word and one more thing i tried out yesterday the first time and it worked absolutely fine Yeah, just balancing on the wheel is fun. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some nice, useful information you wanted to know. And we will probably see each other in the next video in the more detailed M10 for video. And I will be done. <laughs>